G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. We are finally onto our galley. We're going to be ripping everything out so we can fit our new galley in. And the obvious place to start is by getting into the fuel tanks at the front of the boat. <laughs> This job is a little bit different. We thought it would be really interesting to show you the whole process of doing a big job, and, mm. and that means the list that we work to. So we're gonna give you the whole list of all the little jobs we normally don't share. We just do them in the background, we yeah. do them at nine o'clock at night, whatever. Yeah. We're gonna share all of it, we're gonna share the process and how we chronologically have to follow each step for the next step to happen. Yeah. And what happens if we don't have a part, how that sort of happens uh, how that affects everything down mm. river, if you get my meaning. Se sequence is really important mm. on these big jobs, mm. and um, in order to yeah, in order to have the whole job flow, you kind of there's there's some jobs that just can't be done before or after other jobs. So mm. um, that's something that we really wanted to show you is um, why we do things. From the outside, it might look like we do things a bit sort of all over the show and we're jumping from one job to the next, but there's really specific reasons why we have to go with the sequence that we do. We also thought it'd be really fun to uh, take you on the journey of, you know, crossing off the 30 jobs. It's yeah. like it's one job or two jobs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's actually 30 jobs so when you break it down. Yeah. And each one of those jobs is kind of complex and takes something. So it's about this, the, we'll call this the galley install. Yeah. Um, but that, that includes finishing off the tanks at the front because the pipes come down the front accommodation in the, the, um, the studio. So we've got to finish those uh, mm. to finish in here, which is the galley, um, to actually get the kitchen so should we, installed. Should we call it um, installing brew pegs galley part one <laughs> diesel fuel tank lines? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> We'll explain as we go. But I'm going to have a running uh, list of the jobs, which we don't normally do. Normally that's you know, sort of in my head or on, on one of the boards around the boat or on the computer. Um, we're going to put it out Just, so yeah. you can see it, so you can yeah. follow along. And you'll also be able to see what we are working on in the future as well. So we, you know, there might be 30 things on the list and we might only get two of them done you know, in this burst of work that we're doing now. Um, but you'll be able to see what is going to be coming up in the next few weeks as well so, so you get an idea as to um, sort of chronology of, of the build. Mm. So some of it's heavy engineering and some of it's woodworking and a lot of painting and a lot of blast sandblasting and we're sandblasting inside the cabin so that's going to be fun. We're going to cut a little hole out the side of the, the wall and we're going to get rid of that outside so that way so we'll show you all of that. We're building it, the second air vent which we finished one on the side but we've got to do the other one that's for the downstairs accommodation so it all kind of at this stage of the build, we're sort of starting to finish off other areas that we've postponed to get other jobs done, to, mm. to manage money, everything is sort of coming together. So we're at the last sort of mm. part of it, which um, I, can't, Chron I can't believe it really. Chronology, now we can't do much more until we get these bits done. <laughs> and right now, see this is how it works, right now we were hoping to be starting to strip out the front rooms this morning, but the power went yesterday because uh, a plug uh, we have a we have a pretty amazing um, long-term temporary electricity situation going on in the boat, we, and as a result of that, we have to be really careful with how much load we have on the boat. If we turn too many things on, breakers blow, and and that sort of thing, because obviously it's just we're trying to pull too much power from the grid, um, and consequently we have a lot of extension cords running around the boat and um, switches and all that sort of stuff. It's been really tiring living in a in a work workspace, and, and anyone who's built a house or a boat and yeah. living on it, you know, you know what it's like. It's, it's it's awful, and this is sort of the last bit of it. Yeah. Um, after this, things will be sort of more settled, comfortable. The electrics up the front will be pretty much set. One of the goals of this um, this working bee that we're doing right now is we're going to be laying all of the cable trays into the boat so that we can start putting the permanent wiring in, which means that we can start putting it... At the moment, we've got everything running through breakers and, and so on on the boat, so everything's safe. Mm. Um, but it is temporary, you know, like we knew that we were going to be ripping out that wiring at some point. Um, now we're getting to the stage where we're fitting the permanent wiring, so I'm really excited because it means we can do it properly, um, mm. and and we can have you know decent circuits that are really well isolated from each other and so on. So um, long term, it's going to make the boat much better. But it's something that we couldn't we couldn't do until we got to the stage where we're doing the kitchen and so on yeah. because um, we just knew that everything was going to change. So if we tried to put anything in that was permanent three years ago, it all would have been ripped out two or three times by now. So And it's hard, it's really hard because our personalities are a little bit perfectionist. Yeah. And this project has been a huge challenge and a lot of growth for us, personal growth. Like, yeah. Do we really need to be that, you know, 
pedantic about that. We don't. We've learned that there's a lot more flexibility than we could have imagined, but people, it's still really hard. <laughs> people sometimes wonder why I don't bother cutting the zip ties, the end of the mm. zip ties off. It's because I know probably in six weeks' time we're going to be ripping them all out anyway yeah. and changing them every six weeks. So. Yeah. I got to the stage where I just I'd given up actually snipping them off. I don't care. I know they're going to be cut soon. <laughs> Even though it's frustrating, it's yeah. really frustrating. Things are not how we would have them be. But it meant what it meant was that sacrifice and living with that kind of chaos meant that we could get to here. Yeah. Um, without ex overextending our, uh, ourselves, uh, paying for things that we would have to get rid of. Yeah. It, it's the conversation is is quite complex about the decisions that we've made and I think we've made mostly we've made good ones mm. um, to this point so really this is a bit of a celebrationary this this one um, if you know mm. if we had like guns bla blazing I'd, I'd be really happy pew, pew. <laughs> 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 yeah, made it <laughs> it's we, really exciting we need massive cowboy hats we're gonna do that <laughs> well you do have a cowboy hat <laughs> <laughs> but before we sign off and go to Bunnings and get this uh, we've got a wee bit to get we've got to get plastic sheeting because we've got to tape stuff up so it doesn't get destroyed as we go along I just wanted to share something that um, Stu and Dame organised for me. Stu's idea and Dame put it into action. How cool is that? Now this means, I've got it here, restricted inability to manoeuvre. <laughs> the, these. And this is no longer. I absolutely love these ones. They're so smooth. We've got to figure out a floor in the um, gully. Um, Jess has found some lovely ones. <laughs> then Matt, so the rough. Actually, come close and see if yeah. you can hear it, the difference. This is like a... I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but the mat is quite sticky. Like, I imagine you know, it'll be a fake. You'll kind of have a wee bit of grip. Um, but of course, if there's moisture on the ground, it, you, you'll soak. There's tiles. But we quite like the this sort of size, or... The other idea we had was um, maybe doing something like a lino, but we're terrified that the boat will look like 1973. <laughs> Jess found some options. Laugh, <laughs> Vinyl awesome. tread plate. I don't think the dimples will stop the ice skating when it gets wet. No, I think that would be very slippery. Tiles is difficult, it's always going to be slippery. Yeah, that's and true. Breakable, you know, I think could move and crack. Okay. This won't crack. Let's go have a look. Okay. Marine carpet, of course, is you go to in a, in a boat, isn't it? But um, look, look how thin that is. Yeah. Like, we well, have underlay. Remember, it's like, oh, here we go. It's not bad. I quite like that. I don't think I can bring myself to use lino. <laughs> <laughs> don't suggest it, okay? That one. Twenty bucks a meter. Oh yeah. It's all. It's, not bad. it's all the it's same. It's a huge space, is it? Yeah. And then can you take a look? Yeah, and that's the horrific, oh. horrific liner. Do you think taking a safety too far? <laughs> so these actually are the mats that we were considering though. Yeah. So in the kitchen or galley, we were thinking of having these and they're quite sort of chunky, um, spongy rubber. Soft and underfoot, but grippy. Yeah. And you can see where you're going at night. If everything blows in the boat, you've got a little bright sort of something to walk by. So I personally like the tiles, I love the um, smoothness of them and the cleanliness, you're able to keep them really clean for a long time, I really like that about them, but I don't quite know how to marry up them being on a boat inside the galley. <laughs> um, a lot of people I think would probably just go with something like vinyl, um, but I'm terrified of that. And carpet is amazing to stand on, but it gets grubby all the time. We have carpet in there at the moment and it's really difficult to keep it clean, mm. but it is the nicest thing to stand on. So. Um, yeah. Um, it's a work boat, so it's, it's got the, it's a difficult thing. The floor is difficult. It's incredibly grubby. Yeah, it does. Mm. And sometimes, you know, really st stuff you can't clean out. So. Maybe maybe we just settle on stainless tread plate <laughs> <laughs> throughout the whole boat. <laughs> so this is going to happen in stages. First step, we need to rip apart our bedroom. So I'll show you what it looks like now, and then we'll show you what it finishes up like. So we've got two bunks in this room. Bunk at the top which doesn't have any um, bottom on it at the stage. We ripped it out the other day. Um, and then, yeah, we've got some insulation that we have to take out. So that um, bottom bed there has to go. The insulation has to go because right up in this far corner, we're going to be putting in some new stainless pipes. So that pipe that you can see against the wall there, that used to be the uh, vent for the fuel tank that's under the floor. 
and then there's another pipe right there that's the filler for the same tank those are both getting replaced they're currently mild steel which is no good they have to be replaced with stainless so we're putting the vent is going to be in that um, far corner right there and I haven't quite decided if I'm going to put the filler back in the exactly the same place back there or if we're going to put it in a different location while I'm up the front of the boat doing that Jess is down the back stripping out basically the lounge this is going to be our storage room while we're um, got the front of the boat in pieces so our new editing studio welcome to it <laughs> um, welcome as... to the Thunderdome yeah the place of chaos yeah it will the, be the place chaos was born <laughs> <laughs> for the next month it's going to oh, be pretty you know what it's like when you're in a yacht it's even worse because you you've got less space yeah you've got to move the, the bed to get into the batteries or you want to do the plumbing you've got to undo three three covers <laughs> worth of tools so that you can get to the one tool that you need that's packed at the back <laughs> that's right that you have to put it all away by lunchtime because your your bench is your kitchen <laughs> we've got we've got bigger things to move and more things to you know more space but like, it's the same it's the same theory yeah. <laughs> no one looks forward to this part of it <laughs> This is where we got to. We have an almost empty room. So we'll get rid of this insulation. Um, that's the last thing to come out. But the reason we're stripping this room out, that pipe there, that's our vent. And that pipe there, that's our fill for the front fuel tank. So from where, I, from where my foot is just there, all the way forward and down, that's a fuel tank. Um, and there's one on either side of the boat. So where this wall is, this is the center line of the, the boat, and that wall basically carries all the way down to the keel on the boat and separates the two tanks, so you've got a port and starboard tank. We're gonna be replacing these two pipes with stainless. However, we're also potentially gonna be repositioning them. So the vent um, over here is the bigger of the two pipes. Rather than put it, I've got thick wall pipe that I'm gonna be using, and rather than um, tuck it against the side of the boat like it is now, makes it almost impossible to paint behind it. It's quite close and it's, I don't necessarily think it's a great solution. Um, and you also have to bend that pipe. I don't have the capabilities to bend it. I don't have benders. So what I'm thinking of doing, because it's a vent, it just needs to be at the highest part of the tank. That corner right over there, if I put a hole there and put the pipe straight up in that corner there, it's gonna be behind insulation by the time we're finished. And it's also gonna be, um, means that I'm gonna be able to maintain the hull better. So I'll be able to get behind it, paint it properly. It also means I don't have to bend anything because I've got a straight um, section that I'm putting in. I think I've figured out why it's there. Why? Too, because, you know, we, we don't have to have it um, up against the wall like that because we've got insulation coming out. Yeah, so true. Than anyone else would. Oh, know? and they wouldn't have had that. They wouldn't have had that, so they want to have as much space in the room as possible. But for us, insulation's coming out there and coming out That's there. a good point. So we can place it anywhere we want, really. I didn't think straight. of that. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, because if we don't have to bend it, bending's a bit of a mission for us. We just don't have the, that sort of gear. Yeah. Look who's back from a couple of weeks of sailing. It look like something's happening here. <laughs> it's been really, really going for it. It looks a bit tired. Cleaned up. I know, it's awesome crazy, stuff. isn't it? You're trying to present a new image. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, so now that we've got this room stripped apart, um, we are ready to start work. However, I didn't really want project scope growth. We've had a tiny little adjustment to the plan. The hatch, the hatch that's in the floor, gets down to our coffer dam. That piece of wood that's sitting over top is the edge of a sea berth. If we were to put a narrow sea berth in there, um, with the bed that we had in there before, it comes right out to about where my foot is, in line with that black line on the wall there. So that hatch definitely doesn't work. It's completely in the wrong place. However, there is a spot that has a door. If we chuck the hatch right there, you're never ever going to put anything in the doorway. So we're going to make it um, slightly to the side. We're going to basically build a new hatch and then we'll weld that one up. Um, but yeah, we have a slight adjustment for our plan already. Day one, the easiest room. The simplest job, replace two pipes, has grown into day one, two pipes, build a hatch. Good morning people of YouTube. So um, it's not real early, eight, nine o'clock, something like that in the morning. We need to cut that stainless vent off over the back there. That's gonna form the top half of our new vent. Um, that's a decent vent system the way that they've designed it. We just need to put it in a slightly different place. So rather than keep it on the side of the boat like that and tuck it down the side of the hull as it goes down into the tank, we're actually gonna move it over into the center. Um, now the edge of the tank, that's the front corner of the tank right there. So we're gonna put it about here somewhere and it'll come up and sit just behind this hatch. So it's not necessarily gonna be in the way of anything, um, but it is gonna be in a you know slightly different orientation um, away from the side of the boat. And the filler, which is down by that scupper, that's also potentially gonna move. And I say that with trepidation because I'm not 100% certain. I kinda like where it is. Um, and the reason why I wanna keep it there is because obviously you've got the scupper, if you have a big spill, it goes over the side rather than all the way down your boat um, and all over your foredeck. However, the other side of it is mainly um, the pipe that goes down into the tank, that has to go right to the bottom of the tank. So this was something that one of our, um, one of our friends actually told us about. He used to drive um, fuel trucks and um, he was saying that when you have the filler just going to the top of the tank, you can actually get sparks inside a diesel tank when you start really hoeing the fuel in. So you've got really high volume you know, pumps dumping it in, which is what Brewpeg's capable of. We go to a wharf, um, like a commercial wharf, we're gonna get some pretty high flow diesel into the tanks. Um, when you start getting that much flow going through, I'm assuming it's friction, but either way you can actually get sparks inside the tanks and they've had tankers blow up because of it. So they change their rules and they change the way that they build them. And the way that they do it is they actually have the filler pipe go all the way down to the bottom of the tank. So essentially you put the fuel in at the top of your filler pipe and then it's filling up from the very bottom of the tank upwards so it's underwater when it exits the pipe. Um, basically stops the ability for sparks to happen um, and it's a much safer system and that's what Brewpig used to have um, we cut it out it was this the pipe was absolutely shagged it was mild steel and rusted and disgusting um, we actually cut all of that out however we I think we made an error by basically cutting it up at the deck level thinking that that was okay um, but now I understand why they have it all the way down we're going to duplicate that Right, before I go and clean this up, I want to polish it up with the grinder, um, give it a nice, you know, clean surface so I can weld to, but also get rid of all this rubbish and all of this um, old random paint and stuff that's on it. But I wanted to show you what these vents are like. So these are um, a really simple vent that they use on commercial trawlers, they're common as. Um, and if I can, so to allow air in, basically just unscrew this lid. And this is all six mil um, stainless, so it's all pretty heavy duty. Um, there's a rubber gasket at the bottom that you can see down there with a stainless gauze. Obviously it needs a bit of a clean and a wash because it's pretty grubby, hasn't probably been cleaned in quite some time. Um, but the way that they make them, they clearly make them very, very symmetrical as you can see by the wobble on this when I undo it. Not that it really matters, so long as it seals properly in the bottom. There we go. A bit of threaded rod that has a bend on it looking at that with a piece of six mil plate with a thread in it and you can see they've got just some a couple of round bars maybe three or four of those round bars that are just welded in there so it's a really simple thing just a piece of pipe three or four round bars with a flat piece of six mil with a thread a rubber gasket on a piece of six mil that's built like a flange some gauze to stop monsters going down 
and then a pretty straightforward lid. So you've just got a piece of stainless with a piece of threaded rod in it. And you can sort of see there's a very slight dimple on the top where they've welded it previously. Bit of tube, weld around the edge, give it a clean up with the grinder, and there you have it. Bulletproof, simple vent. That's what they use on a lot of commercial boats, some variation of that theme. Right, now that we've got this thing shiny enough to work with, it's time to glue some pipe on the end of it and make it long enough to reach into the tank. You can see here Dame's cutting the stainless pipe with the drop saw and he's going quite slowly, just little bit by little bit. And that, that's just so the stainless doesn't work hard. And that's the thing with stainless, if there's too much heat, it, it gets too hard to cut. So he's going slowly, keeping the heat out of it uh, so he can get right through it. Radio, little welding jig made. So, a bit of uh, heavy wall aluminium angle, and then I just clamp it into so down and back, so I make sure it's hard into the corner on both sides, and then that means that this is flush all the way around, so it's going to be a nice easy join. I'm going to TIG weld this. Um, that's why I haven't beat it out. So I'm just actually going to fill it in all the way through with um, probably about 200 amps on the TIG, and just give it a blast. It's heavy wall pipe, so it should be fine. And no, I'm not going to be purging the inside. Um, this piece of pipe won't crack or fall apart it only has to support its own weight um, and it's heavy enough that um, I'm not going to blow holes in it so yeah we'll be fine when how are we going to stop you Now that those two bits of pipe are welded together, the wind's obviously stopped because that's how welding works. Um, I need to trim this pipe to length, so as you can see I've basically got a great big long length of pipe um, now with a, with a vent welded to the end of it. So um, I need to trim it so it'll clear both the deck um, up by the anchor and also the, um, the top of the fuel tank, the deck head that's within the cabin itself. So um, we'll get that trimmed and then we'll start blasting some holes in the deck and in the tank and we'll weld it in. Alright, another um, hot day. Stu down in Danga Marine yesterday did a live feed and I think he said I caught like the last three minutes of it and he said it was like 43 degrees down there yesterday and it was pretty similar to that the day before. Um, we don't have anywhere near that but it's just still pretty warm up here. Anyway, right so we need to start cutting into this deck so that we can get this new vent pipe fitted. So I've done some drawings, let me show you what I got. Old vent pipe location tucked away on the side. 
new vent pipe location tucked behind this anchor room hatch. That line there and that line there are the, are the current steel bulkheads that are inside the boat. Now this here is 60 millimeters thick, that's insulation, and then there's a, um, an allowance for a 5 to 10 millimeter um, wall panel. We don't exactly know how thick our walls are going to be just yet, um, so we've allowed for that. This here is a block of wood, 120 mil by 45 mil, and the wall panel will slot down between the insulation and this block of wood. Second wall panel goes across here, and because this is an external wall, two layers of insulation, so 120 mil of insulation, and then our wall panel. Now, what we want to do is tuck the vent as close as we can to the corner without interfering with um, this, because we're not going to have enough room to weld around it on the inside, without interfering with this piece of wood, and we still need to allow for room to weld it, so it's going to be out here somewhere. So that's the corner of our room, that's where our pipe's going to be located. And then that layout is going to be basically duplicated on the other cabin. So on the, uh, what is it, port cabin, um, we're going to be basically reversing all of our measurements, swapping it over, and then just copying exactly what we've done on this side. So in here, in the think tank, we have the mastermind behind all of this. Our chief scheduler. <laughs> so this uh, project is big. We've realised that it's big. Um, so we're breaking it down into three bite-sized bits. There's three rooms. So here's our master list. There's room for additional stuff. It's broken up into three things. Starboard cabin, portside cabin, and gully. At the bottom of this page, you can see the next jobs we have to carry on with after this one. If you want to pause, have a really good read through, we'll go into more detail as we go along and do each job. Dan's already started the starboard side accommodation at the front here. So you would have seen him in this episode do um, the pipes. <laughs> um, so that's welded in. So what have you got left in here, Dan? We need to replace these pipes, so that stainless pipe I just showed you replaces this mild steel pipe. So I need to cut this off at the deck level and then seal that up with some steel. And then same at the deck head level, cut that off and seal it up with some steel. This pipe that you can see here, this is the filler pipe. So it's a slightly smaller diameter, but it's another mild steel pipe that needs to be cut out and replaced. And we're going to be replacing this one with stainless. That's the pipe um, that we need to bend. And, and then, of course we're doing the... Um modifying the hatch. So this is the hatch for our coffer dam, that's how we get down into it, and that's going to be moved across to the door, basically so that where it is now, um, it's underneath a bed, doesn't matter how we design the bed, it's basically underneath a bed. Um, so we're going to move it over into the door area, because you're never going to put anything in the way of the door opening, which means you'll never have anything in the way of the hatch opening. And how does this relate to getting the galley done? <laughs> <laughs> Everything has to happen in sequence. Yeah, so, it does. We want to have. We don't want to have to um, come back in this part of the boat and do any more work in it. So now's the time to do it. Um, and yeah, it's it's growing. The job list is growing, and some cool engineering in all of this. But we're just racing through it. So once Dame's finished in here, finished that hatch, then we're into the office. This pipe here is a random pipe that's blocked off at both ends, <laughs> and was obviously someone's idea at some point. They stuck a pipe in and then decided to bypass it and do something else. So that's getting cut out. So it's sealed, it's fine, yeah. nothing's wrong with it. But... This is the current filler. Um, it's exactly the same as the other side, mild steel, rusting out, needs to be replaced. And you can see this here, there's a little bit of rust just dripping down there. That's come from the side of the pipe here. It's rusted from the inside and is dripping out. So we know that pipe's dead. Exactly the same problem is happening with that pipe there, which is the original uh, breather. That's going to be replaced with stainless as well. That's also rusting. It will strip out this room. Uh, everything will go, we'll clear all the wiring above, uh, we'll leave the little bits of wooden that we've um, got the, uh, the desk attached to, but we'll clear the desks and I'll move into the saloon for editing for a couple of weeks. Uh, and down here in the corner is the main job in here really, um, other than the pipes. It looks terrible, most of it's surface rust, the rib at the end there, that's rusted through, so we're going to replace that, we're going to cut up. We're going to investigate, cut up to where the rust is, replace that. Uh, that needs to be done properly. Uh, and we'll, we'll really get in and have a really close look, strip everything down to bare steel, just to make sure that this, because there is a bit of rust there. This is filler pipe for the water, for the water tank underneath. Uh, we just need to put a, a plastic um, water safe uh, tube in there and uh, just clamp it. Um, and that, that's fine. We'll double clamp everything, of course. Uh, so yeah, so we'll do that. Um, and then, once we've done that, 
the wee bit of flawless work to do here, a little bit of blasting, uh, re-etching, repainting. It's pretty good, it's not too bad, but it'll be a little bit of work. Uh, the next bit is the galley, the kitchen. So we've got to strip the entire kitchen out. We're going to leave the air conditioner. We don't want to disconnect that because it's a bit to get that um, regassed. So we're just going to cover that, make sure that that's here tight. So we won't have any cooling while we're working in here, which will be really hard. Uh, but I think we'll get the fridge gone, everything else will be stripped out. Uh, and then, do you want to explain the, yeah. the side there? So the reason why we have to rip everything apart is we've got to do quite a bit of work on this side. So you see down in here, right the way along, awesome rust. So we need to deal with that. You can see it's on the floor as well. Those sort of bits on the floor. That's all got to come out. We need to hammer drill it and then sandblast it to make sure we got um, all of the bad stuff out. You can see in some areas it's reasonably deep. So we want to give it the herbs and really, um, you know, get that down to decent steel again. This rib here is, is gone. You can see it's rusted out around the bottom here. So we'll probably cut it somewhere up here and then replace the bottom section. The second rib here is, is pretty similar, rusted all around the bottom. So that'll be cut out um, and replaced. But rather than sort of cut a section and just do the bottom, this one joins onto the window. So this is the bottom of the window ledge here, window sill, whatever you want to call it. So we'll probably cut it here and just replace this whole section um, right the way down. Um, it's just easier than you know trying to cut it and hack it out and replace it there. Um, this area here is also the vent. So where that aluminium piece that you can see there is, that's just a flap that I've stuck it on just to um, just basically provide a, a, a seal on the floor. Um, but a lot of this rust and rubbish you can see up on the edge there, that's got to be sandblasted at the same time. So that aluminium stops all of the sand and water going down into the accommodation below. We will cut a hole in the side of the hull and just push everything out over the side. And then that plate gets pulled out and the vent for the um, downstairs accommodation gets built. And that's where the airflow actually goes through the floor and into the room downstairs. And the vent will sit here up on the, yep, just behind the cleaners and things. That's the door open box vent um, that Dan built with Sanus. So that's really just to, to weld in. And then we've just got some um, some flat bar that we use just to guide where the, the, the air's gonna go, insulate, then we have airflow down into that second room downstairs. That's the port side bedroom. Uh, so there's ins and outs venting downstairs once we finish that one. So it'll look like this one over here. It'll have an aluminium um, panel on top. And then we insulate around that. And then we're going to finish all the little bits and pieces. So there's a bit of blasting to do around. All the sort of work we've done over the last couple of years in here, adding things, taking things out. This was cut out so we could get this huge bench in. Thanks, Bex, for your help. Um, we're going to have to blast and etch and paint this stuff all behind there. We need to repaint everything in here, give it another good couple of coats of paint. And we also need to do the floor. The floor, because we didn't have carpet for the first few years, the paint that we, we did lay down uh, has come away. Uh, the floor is uneven because it's such an old floor, it's pitted and all of that, but it's solid enough, it's fine, we're not going to do anything else other than that corner in here. Um, so we're going to repaint and then we're going to lay some carpet down and then we're going to insulate and then we're going to, I'm not sure we're going to get to the boarding, um, but what we will eventually do is um, insulate and then board over top of it and then we're going to run a splashback, a stainless splashback right round we're going to duplicate this on the other side. We're going to have a stainless bench here. Dane's going to design that this week, and we're going to, we need to get that. It's another timing thing. We need to get that um, rolled so we can put that in. And we also need to order the, um, the new stove top. So the stove will go in here. And once we've done the floor, once we've done the insulation, uh, once everything's back in, then we'll put the uh, plinths down. Dan's going to build some pins. That's what the cabinetry sits on top of, and then we'll put the cabinetry in. So you can see it has a massive undertaking to get this front part of the boat finished. Trev sailed up the coast without a motor, he had a bit of problem with some um, bug getting in the motor. Uh, so he's, uh, he's back, he's going to fix that and Dane helped him sail into the marina, into the berth. 
it's a beautiful morning. The guys were thinking they might use the tender tied up to the side of the boat to go up the river, but uh, the wind came up, the wind was good, so they decided to sail in. Sail's going up, but they're going to sail in. I'll show you. They're just pulling the anchor up now. You can see how the boat is being drawn forward as that comes up. Some help from the local cruising community. Dan and Trev made it look easy.